This is 12.4 non-specific body defense notes. The essential question is, what are the purpose, advantage, and examples of the non-specific body defenses? Non-specific body defense is also called an innate or passive immune response, which means that you are either born with it, that's what innate means, and inherit meaning that you either inherit from your parents, um, specifically the mom, and the advantage or the good thing about the non-specific is that it does not target specific types of pathogens, but it does the same type of protection no matter what type of uh, pathogen it is, what foreign substance it is. And it will protect you against a variety of different pathogens and they don't discriminate. The bad thing about the nonspecific is that it is short-lasting. The, the defense happens now and then, and then afterwards there is no memory and there is no retention of the protection. The two main areas of nonspecific defenses is the first line of defense, which includes the surface membrane barriers, and the second line of defense are your cells and chemical protection, and inflammatory response and fever. The purpose of the first line of defense is it is a barrier, a physical barrier or a chemical barrier that's going to prevent the pathogen or foreign agent or foreign substance from getting into the body where it can do damage. So a mechanical barrier are examples of stuff that is going to prevent the pathogen from getting in. So number one mechanical barrier would be your skin, which creates a physical wall, and that's going to prevent things um, like bi virus, bacteria, or fungus from getting in. And that's why uh, having a cut on your skin is, could be dangerous because now you have an opening where pathogens can get in. Hair and nasal cavities traps any type of particles from getting into the nasal or respiratory tract. Cilia also in the respiratory tract um, will sweep up any of the stuff that has gotten in or sweep up any uh, bacteria or other types of pathogen that has been trapped by the mucus. Chemical barriers are actual chemicals that the body produces and majority of them have a pH of a, um, a pH, acid pH and their job is to prevent or inhibit or kill bacteria. So pH of skin, the, the sweat on your skin is slightly acidic which inhibit bacterial growth. Sebum which is the oils in the hair also is poisonous to bacteria. Earwax in the ear canal will also trap any kind of foreign particles from getting in and then vaginal secretion is acidic which kills bacteria also. Systemic mucosa produces hydrochloric acid which gives you a pH of less than 2 which is a very very strong acid which can pretty much sterilize many and kill many pathogens and also um, a lot of the food material that contain proteins that could be allergic um, to the person can also be destroyed by the enzymes in the stomach. Saliva and tears contain lysozyme, which is an enzyme that kill bacteria also. And remember throughout the respiratory, digestive, and reproductive organs, you have mucous membrane, the mucosa, which has the sticky mucus, and they will trap any microorganism or pathogens that comes in contact with it. Here's a diagram showing the type of immunity. Obviously, the immunity is divided into non-specific, which we're talking about now, and the specific, which we'll get in later. First line of defense is to keep it out, so you have the physical barrier. Mechanical and physical barriers are anything that's going to prevent a wall, that's going to prevent things from getting in. And then chemicals um, that is made by the body will also inhibit uh, things from growing or killing the pathogens. Then second line of defense we're going to get into. Now because the first line of defense has broken down, the pathogen has gotten in and so now you're trying to prevent further damage and to prevent the pathogen from getting in further. So the second line of defense kicks in when the first line of defense has been compromised. So when there's a cut in the skin or somehow the pathogen has bypassed the, the first line of defense protection. 
the and usually um what has happened is that if they have gotten in through a cut, now you have tissue damage. So second line of defense is also involved in repairing of the damage that has caused, but then trying to keep the the pathogen or the foreign substance to getting further into the body. So along the mucous membrane or blood capillaries close to skin so anything that is close to the exposed to the outside you have a bunch of defensive cells and their job is to seek out any type of uh, foreign material and destroy them so phagocytes are a type of white blood cells and they the, specifically the neutrophils and macrophages and their job is to seek out any cells they think that is does not belong there and they swallow it up and then chew it up and then get rid of it natural killer cells and they're called natural killer cells because that's what they do they're found in lymph and blood remember in the second line of defense there is some damage so there could be blood flowing through the area or there is a, a leakage of fluid and these cells can lice, which means to break apart and kill any kind of cancer cells or cells that have been infected with a virus. Okay, so inflammatory response is the response to injury, tissue injury, and there are, um, and their purpose is to, to prevent further damage and to repair the damage that has already happened. And the chemical that is involved is histamine that uh, causes all of the changes or the signs that you see in inflammatory response. There are four, si four cardinal signs of inflammatory response. The heat, the heat in the area. So when you, you know, get, have an injury to an area, there's usually heat coming off of the area. And the reason for that is pyrogens are released, which are chemicals that cause the temperature to rise. So it resets the thermostat for the temperature, body temperature to rise in the hypothalamus. And the swelling, because there is a rush of blood and lymph, um, specifically for the white blood cells, to clean up any kind of pathogen or uh, foreign substance that is trying to get in. So that's what causes the swelling. Because of the rush of the blood, there's going to be redness, and obviously there's going to be pain because the area has been injured, and so there's going to be pain involved. The function of the inflammatory response is to prevent the spread of damage getting in further into the body and their job is to dispose of any kind of injured cells and any pathogen that has been um, has come into the area and then it sets the stage for the tissues to be repaired. Antimicrobial cells are specific cells that are kind of roaming around near the area of where the pathogens might want to get in and they cause a something called a complement fixation. So antimicrobial cells can't really do anything on its own but it kind of helps in alerting the immune cells to activate and kind of put a tag on it or you know sound the alarm so then they know there is some kind of uh, um, a breach in uh, the body where things are getting in that could harm the body. So one of the things that the antimicrobial cells can do is attach to a foreign cell and that um, will cause damage to the cell surface and then it creates holes in the cell membrane of the like cells like bacteria and cause the water to get in and then it will make the cell burst and die. That is one way. Another way that the antimicrobial cells uh, do complement fixation is to uh, make the phagocytes job easier. Okay, so the vasodilators is our, um, a chemical that's going to increase the blood flow to the area, which means that more phagocytes can migrate to the area to destroy any kind of foreign uh, substance. Chemotaxis means that it attracts, it puts markers on the foreign um, substance or foreign agents that are coming in and so that the phagocytes can easily um, recognize them. And then aponization is when the, the cells of the pathogens are made sticky so now that the phagocytes can attach to the, um, the pathogen or the foreign substance easier to cause them damage. 
Interferon is another type of cells. And they are, or chemical, and their job is to, their, their job is a protein, and their job is to, um, it's, it's, it's a chemical released by virus infected cells, and what happens is that it protects the healthy cells by preventing the virus from attaching to them. So that's why it's called interferon. They interfere with the virus' ability to attach to healthy cells and to um, uh, infect healthy cells. A fever is another body defense mechanism when you are being attacked by pathogens. And the fever, the way it works is just like in the inflammatory response, a chemical per called pyrogen, they send signals to the hypothalamus to reset the thermostat in the hypothalamus to a higher temperature, which is going to raise the body temperature. Then what the high temperature does, it inhibits the release of iron and zinc, which is uh, from the liver and the spleen, which is needed by the bacteria in order to thrive in your body. And also the increase in the, sp uh, increase in the temperature will increase the speed of the tissue repair. So it hastens the recovery time. So when you have injury to an area and there is swelling or when you have fever, those things are good things. But the problem is, is that when you have injury and there is swelling, sometimes that rush of fluids to the area will cause the cells of that area of that area to get so much fluid inside it they could burst which causes more damage that's why when usually when we have injury to an area we put ice on it to reduce the um, swelling same thing with fever fever is a good thing when you are sick but when the temperature goes you know and in babies and children anything over 101 or in adults 104 or 105 uh, for a long period of time can cause brain damage and that's where the danger comes in but a mild fever when you're sick is a good thing 12.4 notes homework number one what is the purpose of the mechanical barriers in the body defense number two give examples and locations of chemical barriers number three what are the advantages and disadvantages of non-specific body defense